So if I'm, I'm going to start off first by child sexual abuse, and there's quite a lot of information there in the health pathways. And if we think about child sexual abuse, how do these children present to you? Sometimes you are concerned about something you've heard in the history or something about the examination. Um, and I'm going to talk about that first. Sometimes a mum may come to you, and it's often the mum that comes, um, say, my child said she's been abused, so she's made a disclosure. And I'm going to talk about she, because about the vast majority of the children we see are really uh, little girls and, and young women, but about 10% of the children and, adult, and adolescents we see are males. So I'll, I'll sort of default to she, but obviously it would apply to a, a, a male as well. Um, and sometimes the caregiver, who often is the mum or a family member, comes to you and says, I'm worried about abuse in this child. Now, things that GPs phone us for is if the parent comes and says, there's been blood in the underwear, and I'm afraid this child's been abused, or you might be concerned, is this child abused? Now, I think it's important to actually determine where the blood has come from. You know, is it from the urinary tract? Does this child have a UTI? Is this child constipated with an anal fissure? Or is this from the genital tract? Um, and I think history, a bit of history and examination would help you with that. Now, when you've determined it has probably come from the genital area, even if you're not seeing active bleeding, which often you don't, um, I think one needs to just um, think through this logically and start sort of from the outside and think about it. Any skin condition, inflammation or eczema um, or vulvovaginitis that involves the skin is, can give you some bleeding in the, in the genital area and some blood on the, on the underwear. And that bleeding in the genital area can actually settle very quickly and you may not necessarily see the source of where the blood has come from. Um, sometimes we've had children present with straddle injuries. Um, and we have ways of that we're quite happy to say this is likely a straddle injury. Um, and then there may be rarer causes like lichen sclerosis. We've actually had a child recently who presented with some genital bleeding and it was lichen sclerosis, which is really an inflammatory process in a child, uh, usually pre children. Or you can get rare things like we've had children with urethral um, prolapses or granulomas, or we've had sometimes a hormonal or endocrine cause where it's uterine bleeding. Um, but the most common really is often vulvovaginitis or something going on with the skin. And it's absolutely fine for you to have a look at the child and examine them. Um, and I've put up there, it's extremely, extremely uncommon for a child who's been sexually abused to present with bleeding. We, we just but never see this. So it kind of is almost reassuring for you that there's probably another reason for this blood. Now, um, the other thing is vulva, uh, vaginal discharge in children. I think that's something you deal with quite often in your practice. Again, I can just say to you the most common cause is nonspecific prepubertal vulva vaginitis in little girls. There can be other uh, things like children presenting with H flu infections, which hopefully with immunizations we don't see anymore. Uh, Strepvulbitis. Remember, children who've got symptoms at night, it may be pinworms that crawl out and cause vaginal problems at night. Um, a discharge, it's difficult to clear. We, we need to think about foreign bodies, because you know little ones love putting foreign objects up in the orifice and the vaginas get another orifice to put something up. Um, or little bits of toilet paper often go up there as well. And again, I've put in red, it is extremely, extremely rare for a child who's been sexually abused to have an STI. And you can see this based on a study um, that we published from our units. Um, it was just over 1% of children that presented with a discharge who actually had an STI. And um, just to say to you, please don't try and screen for an STI. I don't know if, I suspect there's probably some of you that have had this experience. You may send off a swab and ask for checking of STIs and what you're gonna get is this saying, we're not gonna process this test for you. You have to talk to a, a, a pediatrician around your concerns. And that's for anyone less than 13 years of age. Um, because the, I think the thing is, if the child has got an STI, there's a whole process of how you have to collect that evidence, that's forensic evidence, and we really need to do it in our units because it's a huge, huge process that this child and family really go through because this is the only proof of sexual abuse then in those rare cases that do present to you with gonorrhea or chlamydia. So please just call us. Now, I think I've preempted my slide. What do you do if you're worried? You phone a friend and please, as I said, please call us. Um, we're available for sexual abuse, um, to see patients will be consulted 24 seven. Um, and I'll give you the contact details. Um, it's in the health pathways as well. 
um, we have an in, um, in hours referral phone, after hours, one, one of us pediatricians on call for the whole of Auckland around sexual abuse concerns. So just phone us, consult, and we'll decide to do the, uh, what's best for that child. And I'm not going to go through this, but just a lot of reasons um, why we're well resourced to deal with these very tricky situations. And this is in your health pathways. The numbers were a little incorrect, and I've asked them to be updated, that you've got the correct details. If a young person discloses, and this is often a Monday morning call that we get from you, usually, and let's look at Mary, she's five years old, her parents are separated, she's come back from spending the weekend with her dad, she's in the shower. Now, they're one of two disclosures, and um, some of the wording is actually wording from a child that I saw recently. So Mary says to mum, my flower's sore. That's a common terminology for flower, one of many interesting terms used. And the mum says, who's been touching a flower? And Mary says, daddy. Now you have another situation, which is the child I saw. Same question, same scenario. But Mary says, daddy, he tickled my flower and licked it. So these are the kind of disclosures you might get from a young child. So what does the first disclosure mean about daddy did it? Who knows what that means? There's no context to that. I don't know if the child's been abused or not. Um, and really, I think the best is phone us because, you know, sometimes we, we often do see the parent who's often very, very um, distressed by this. We actually often see them urgently and just try and make sense and decide what the best thing is to do. There's often a lot of other things going on with family violence between parents. Some really, um, you know, sometimes the mum will say, I know dad, you know, the father that I'm not with anymore was watching child pornography. Um, she may her, have her own sexual abuse history. There may be a lot of it. So we, we're happy to sit with the mum and go through this. The second disclosure sounds like a pretty clear disclosure that needs to be looked at. And this is something that you've got to think of that child's safety. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I, I know that Oranga Tamariki, there are many views about Oranga Tamariki, but the reality is it is the only statutory agency we have that are tasked to keep children safe. And, and they need to know about this because this child cannot go back to this father until this has been investigated. Um, and, that, and she's five years old. She can be immune, uh, she can be, sorry, <clears throat> she can be uh, interviewed and, and, and see what this all means. And that gets done through Oranat Mariki initially in consultation with the video unit. Please call us because your forensic time frame to gather any evidence in a prepubertal child is very, very narrow. It's about 24 hours, um, maybe two, three days, but the chance of finding any useful DNA from a child's examination is a very short uh, window of, of time. So please call us as well. Or if you're not sure what to do, just call us and, and, and we will manage this or help manage this. If you look at sexual abuse where um, the mother or caregiver comes to you and they're concerned about abuse, um, don't talk to the caregiver in front of the child. Get the information from her. Um, I often ask mums when they're very distressed about this and I'll, I'd say to them, Look, I know you, you're very concerned about your child, that she may have been sexually abused. And sexual abuse is so common. Um, I'm just wondering and just checking whether you've got your own abuse or you know someone who has an abuse that you're close to, because this is often triggering. And it's amazing how many of the mums have their own abuse. They have never disclosed it to anyone, and one can then manage her distress as well. And she can have her ACC form and LinkedIn. And... Um, you know, more often than not, we tend to almost pick the mums that have their own uh, and the family members that come who've got their own abuse, by the way, their absolute distress. Um, often sexualised behaviour is a concern. And just to say, if a child has sexualised behaviour, firstly, oh, one minute left, oh my word, um, there's a lot of resources. It doesn't necessarily mean sexual abuse. Um, and there are resources. I'm going to flick through very quickly with adolescents. They will either disclose abuse be concerned about sexual health concerns, or they're intoxicated, can't remember anything, but worried about abuse. And if they come to you and there's been a recent abuse, I think this is basically, does she want to go to the police? Is she safe? There are obviously health um, issues that need to be addressed and the emotional side of things. We're happy to see these young women urgently um, and we will um, arrange all the support they need and look at the whole forensic process and see if they want to go to the police. Um, the forensic time frame is much, um, lo slightly longer in adolescents, up to seven days, if we can do a cervical swab. If they don't want to go to police, um, certainly it's 
in the end, they need all the information uh, to make that decision, but um, it's their choice not to go. And we often do just-in-case forensics, where we do the forensic exam, don't give it to the police, and it gives them time to think about reporting. Um, if it's historical abuse, um, there's no urgency forensically, but you've got to look at the safety, and this is a real case that we saw. Um, you know, disclosed abuse by the father, didn't want you to tell anyone. In fact, she says that he hasn't done anything for a year. Um, this was actually at a school, the disclosure was made, not a GP, nothing was done, and she was raped a few days later by her father again. Um, so you, with an adolescent, you're often balancing confidentiality and safety, but unfortunately, if they're not safe, one has to involve orangatamariki. Um, the only choice I give the young person then is uh, where orangatamariki can meet with them. Can they maybe meet with you at your school and talk to you first? Um, around that. And again, in your pathways, this is from your pathways, there's a lot of information of, of that. And we do therapeutic assess, um, in, um, checks where we look at all these other issues, but there are no um, health checks. I mean, sorry, forensic issues. So that was, again, a very whirlwind talk. And it was ex one of the most challenging talks I've ever had to put together. <laughs> Ten minutes took me probably two days' worth of work. <laughs> and I hope... <laughs> I really hope that that would be helpful. And there's probably no time for uh, any uh, questions, but if you have any questions from what any of us have presented, um, my email address is there. Please flick it to me, and we're more than happy to um, you know, answer your questions about any of these presentations. Any questions about a, a case, phone through to our unit, and we can, we're happy to consult and, and help you manage that. Thank you.